this is one for you Tama fans out there. I found today one of my drums had sustained some water damage down in the basement. It was stored in a closet. Never seen any water there before, and I went down there, and I was trying to pull a head off of the top of this 18-inch drum for a small bass drum experiment, and noticed that there was a bunch of stuff on the top of the head. And took it apart and found that these screws were rusted. They'd obviously, obviously sustained some water and um, haven't figured out exactly where the water is coming from yet. I have some, some theories. Um, there's a couple of wires above that may be acting as a drip line to pull some water down into the basement. But needless to say, I was not too happy about, about it. This particular drum, the Tama Royal Star from the 80s, is coated on the inside of the drum. So fortunately, that probably saved this drum from any real significant damage. I'm going to disassemble it here and talk about the drum. You're looking at the six ply right now, which is China on inside and outside, and I believe mahogany in the middle. I'll have to verify that. It's either mahogany or maple. It's one of the M's. But I'm going to take this apart and clean everything up. Mostly concerned about the shell. The screws can be replaced as needed. This drum I bought new in the 80s. And this particular model of Royal Star has what can best be described as a printing on the outside of the outer layer of China. So they use that China wood, I think, because it's good for um, finishing. And I don't know the exact process they use. I believe it was kind of an experimental process that they, they used in the 80s. Short-lived, I think. But it's been described as printing, and it looks beautiful. The issue can be if it gets dinged. There's not really much you can do except for what I have found is I've, I use an, a, a color matched uh, stain to, uh, you know, hide any dings. It works pretty well. Um, this drum was probably an 8 out of 10 and, and, and still is in that it's not very dinged up. If you guys have seen these uh, on online... If you've ever seen these drums for sale, they frequently look really bad because the finish is a little fragile, and when they get dinged, they, uh, they you know, hard to repair. People don't know what to do with it. So this 18-inch drum has probably been on the road less than some of the other ones. Uh, the drums overall, though, are in pretty good shape. It's, this is part of a much larger set that I have. Biggest concern right now, I think, is, this, of course, the inside of the wood and also the screws. So we're gonna take a few steps here to make sure everything's okay with the drum and go from there. We're looking at one of the lug castings here, tension rod holders, and as you can see, eh, pretty good shape, but they've been sitting for a bit and they need a little polish. I usually use WD-40 on this type of stuff. Any Anything that you need to get rid of some gunk and dirt, uh, dust, just general. WD-40 works really well. It's cheap, and I use it on a lot of things like this. All, all the metal will be sprayed down with WD-40 as a starting point. And um, then it'll even, with a rag, it'll even remove some, you know, some topical surface rust. And then after that... I'll go back and polish anything that needs to be polished. These drums don't have to be perfect. They are working drums. I've had them a long time. And uh, they sound amazing. They sound really good. One of the secrets to the Tama sound is the angle of the bearing edge. Here's a quick look at 
the screws sitting in WD-40. I'm going to use some lemon oil on the inside of the shell. I'm going to use a few products. This is my first choice. I use this on guitar necks. Works really well. Need to order some more. I've had this bottle for years. And my second choice is something like this. It's very similar, not quite as thick, but uh, good stuff. Works fine. And then I think due to the circumstances of getting some water on the inside of the shell, it's, I'm going to use some of this feed and wax. And this is a orange oil plus a wax. The inside of these shells were basically clear coated at the factory. They have a, a name for the process they did. And I can't remember what it's called, but it's, it's essentially a clear coat. So I have here kind of partial porosity. I don't know if that's from age or if it's from the fact that it's a very, very thin clear. But I tell you, it probably saved these shells. So when I go to wipe this oil on here, I can see it drinking it in. But it's also not like I'm wiping down just bare dry wood. So it's one of the things that gives these drums their distinct sound. I record with these a lot. I've recorded with them for many, many years. And they're some of the best recording drums that I've had. Even with the deep shells. That's actually probably maybe why they sound so good. And I've had a difficult time finding drums that sound as good. If I buy another set, there will probably be uh, Tamas as well. So you can see how it's kind of drinking in some of the oil here. This is kind of phase one. And let's check out the next one. Here we have the drums wiped down with the oil. It's looking really good. I'm happy with the results. I am going to put at least one coat of the feed and wax on there. I'm also going to apply it to the outside. This finish is a little hard to describe, but it's not porous at all. So the reason I would be doing that would be basically to add a coat of wax to the outside, which I think for any finished drum, really, a carnauba wax on the outside is not a bad idea because it's a moisture barrier and it also uh, will help with minor scratches. It will it will keep it from getting scratched. For those of you that have ever waxed your uh, clear coat on your car, you know it doesn't scratch as easily because things uh, just skate off of it. It decreases the friction. So I'm going to wax both the inside and outside of this. The inside is for functional purposes because a little bit of water did get in there. The outside is uh, just as a protective measure. This is a slight gouge here to give you an idea of like what happens when these when these get gouged and um, I'll probably stain that later. Here I'm adding the feed and wax and I'm going with the grain and it's drinking it in nicely. I ended up doing two coats of this and so I believe this is coat number one and um, you're supposed to let it sit for about 20 minutes. It has a combination of beeswax, carnauba wax, and orange oil in the feed and wax. I bought this, um, I had a guitar that had a neck on it that seemed to dry out more than others. And so I bought it based on some recommendations of guitar players. And it's been a pretty good product. I've used it on a few guitar necks and uh, I recommend it. No silicones as far as I know, if that's a concern for future refinishing, but double check me on that. Putting some on the outside of this finish, this kind of printed finish that looks like wood grain. It's a beautiful finish, as long as you can keep it from getting dinged up. People disparage it because it's not real wood grain and because it um, is difficult to repair. But I'll tell you, one of the advantages is it's super, super thin. And 
these drums really sing because of that. The combination of this thin shell, the six ply shell, with this super thin finish on the outside, even thinner than probably a clear coat, with this uh, clear coat on the inside of the shell for projection makes for a very unique sound. All right, removing things outside. I've got the hardware in a Coffee Mate can here, make it a little easier to spray down with WD-40. And I'm just going to spray it down, let it sit for a second. You can kind of be sitting in that liquid while I pull them out one at a time and just wipe them down. This is, I found the quickest, fastest way just to get rid of just that top level of surface gunk. These do have some plastic inserts and um, you don't want to let plastic and rubber s soak in WD-40 for long periods of time. But for just quick and dirty spray down, wipe down, it's fine in my experience. Here's an example of what the outer shell looks like after the feed and wax has been wiped off. It's not shiny like carnauba wax and like a car carnauba wax. This uh, may be a slight sheen, a bit more sheen, but it's still the same sort of semi-matte finish that the drums originally had. Here's another shot of the six ply bearing edge. So my biggest problem are these. Some of them are super rusty, some of them are not. I'm gonna go ahead and try to clean these up the best I can and order replacements later as needed. So after letting them soak a bit, I'm going to try some rust converter on particularly the outer washers, which are the only real issue. Some of the heads are a little surface rusty too. So rust converter will stop any corrosion rust from happening. And that's my main goal right now with this drum is to just get it playable again and make sure that nothing, no, no corrosion, no oxidation is spreading anywhere that I don't want it to. This is what it looks like with the hardware back on. These are the screws that have been refinished and the hardware's back on. I'm wiping everything down, cleaning all the hardware with WD-40. And we're about to do a sound test. So I'm giving you a headphone warning, headphone warning. So how did it turn out? Pretty good. Got off most of the rust. The shell is safe. Everything shined up. I'm going to store this in a different place until I find out what's going on with the leak. Hopefully this will help you if you have a similar issue or if you're interested in Tama Royal Star drums, vintage Tama drums. Thanks for watching. See you soon.